We used a very old sound pack, which I absolutely love. We highly recommend it. It's full of creepy noises. What's up everyone, awesome to see you here. Today's video is a special one. We'll finally get to talk about animation and editing. Something that's a really important part of our professional lives, but we have never shared much about it until now. And it's even better to explore it through the lens of Creative Sandbox. So today we are diving into storyboard, editing and everything in between. Let's jump right into it. Usually when we start working on animations, especially architectural ones, we like to keep things simple and make the process as natural as possible. We don't try to invent everything at once, instead we want to grow from one idea to another. And to do that, we focus on two things. First, we get familiar with the 3D scene. And then secondly, we look for music. Simple as that. So we go into the 3D scene and move around like we are cameramen <laughs> on a movie set, you know? We want to see what the scene has to offer. And we are not looking for the best possible angles, but actually anything that we can use, even if it's just okay. We look for details, portraits, establishments, vignettes. Even if we come across an angle like this, with just one or two priests, that's not particularly strong composition-wise, we don't dismiss it, because you never know what might work in the edit. After about an hour or two, we usually exhaust all the possible angles. In this case, we save them directly from the interactive mode, but normally we just take screenshots. To keep things organized, we group everything, environment shots, chapel shots, and a whole series with the priests. And once we've got all that laid out and sorted, the first part of the process is done. The next thing is searching for music. And for this project, we were definitely going for something cinematic, uh, but is it dark? Is it cheerful, fast or slow? Like those choices are depending on your choice. But knowing the 3D scene will help you decide and make that choice. As for the places to find music, we mostly use artlist.io, but there are tons of different websites for that, paid and free alternatives as well. And honestly, finding the right track can take hours, sometimes even days, like no joke. But one quick tip we can give you here is that look for tracks that are varied. They should have some build-ups, drops, moments of silence, and maybe a strong ending. If the music sounds cool, but it's the same thing over and over again, that's not much to go with in the edit, you know? So yeah. And once you have a few good candidates, you can actually make a test, like is it working or not? But before we do it, I want to share you a few loose ideas that we are having going into this project. We actually had two of them, but nothing set in stone, but just enough to help us narrow the direction. The first was idea of parallel worlds, and the second one was the ritual, or something centered around the priest. We always wanted to create some kind of hidden reality beneath the surface, and at this point we didn't even know if the second world was something like a nightmare-ish one or something else. We just thought that red space looks cool. Like seriously, that was our thinking process. And since we have two different timelines, uh, we knew that the ritual had to be something that glued them together, you know, and we kept that uh, cookery dancers, you know, we wanted to integrate them somehow. Yeah, it was all super vague, but that's the beauty of the creative process. It was just enough to give us direction in the edit without locking us in. All right, back to the music and edits. We are in the Adobe Premiere now. I've got my project open. There's a simple folder structure. We keep all the previous sequences just in case. And here's version one, where we are testing music. And you can also see some early Midjourney images used as placeholders. At this time, the most important thing is checking if the music has so-called hard beats. That's the test, you know, hard beats. Like those are the key moments in the edit where something meaningful is about to happen. You can see one hard beat here, where we first hint at the creature. And another one here, when we imagined the two parallel worlds merging. We really like how the music builds up towards those moments and kind of carries the transition forward. But while it looked promising, there was still something wrong about the beginning. So yeah, fast forward, we are a little bit further along. It's another edit where we have added a second piece of the music on top of the first one. 
And as I mentioned, we liked the original song for the middle and the end, but it was too strong for the beginning. We decided to start with something softer and transition to the main track as we reveal the priest for the very first time. those moments really nicely connected together. And fun fact here, you can also see a test shot with the priest. We actually really wanted them to dance, but it didn't just work. So we shifted direction. Instead of dancing, we settled on different version of the ritual or maybe no ritual at all. We were okay with them just approaching the chapel in a more symbolic way. So yeah, back to the heartbeats. We had all of them locked in. And once they are in place, you can start figuring out what happens between them. Like the heartbeats break the timeline into clear sections, giving you room to explore what each part could contain. And in our case, we thought the first section should be the introduction to this world, but we weren't sure if there should be like more environment shots or maybe chapel shots. Either seems to be working, so that's fine. Then comes the introduction of the priest. And finally, the last section is the ritual. Even if everything isn't 100% locked in, that's okay. The most important thing is that we have an idea and we have a structure to build around it. Moving on, we have another edit a bit further down the road. At this point, we are starting to fill in some sections between the heartbeats with actual shots. Some shots are still work in progress, some are close to the final, but either way, we can start lining things up to see if the story holds together. We are testing different combination of shots, different pairs of shots. We are trying to find three or four that flow well together, like those environment shots in the beginning. And not gonna lie, this is where a bit of experience really helps to make things click, but I can also tell you this. Try to see your edit as a question-answer sequence. Every shot either asks about something or reveals something. And it's best to have both. Our heartbeats are the big answers. But in between, we used a lot of question-like shots. Those shots and sections are just enough to tease, but not enough to give it all away. If your edit is answer after answer after answer, it gets boring real fast. And that's why so many architectural animations are super boring, you know? It's a presentation of answers instead of storytelling per se. Next up, V11 already. We are a couple of days in at this point. All the shots are in the right places and the sections between the heartbeats are locked in as well. In the meantime, we needed to extend one section. This one with the shots right before the final heartbeat. We needed a bit of time to properly tell the ritual story and changes like that are totally fine. Anything between the heartbeats can be stretched or shortened as needed. And we knew we had that flexibility because we had already tested the music potential right at the start of the process. That's the beauty of going from top to bottom. It gives you a room to adapt without breaking the whole thing apart. All right, so before we show you the final cut, we want to walk you through the storyboard. Looking at it here, you can see it's broken into chapters. Those are guided by heartbeats. And between them, we've got grouped shots like the environment or the priest shots. You'll also notice the question answer structure we talked about earlier, like we hint at a woman early on, but it takes a while before we see her face. We show one priest alone and then reveal how many are there altogether and we hold back the full review of the creature until the right moment. It almost feels like a puzzle, like you need to put each shot in the right order, but the heartbeats are the frame of it, and then you can go down and make specific decisions later on. Okay, so slowly bringing this lesson home, this is the final edit. As you can see, there are a few more layers added, both in the video and audio. One of them was the sound design, and not gonna lie, it was a fun process. Uh, I will play these sounds in the background while I talk, we used a very old sound pack, which I absolutely love. It's Motion Pulse from Video Copilot. We highly recommend it. It's full of creepy noises. They sound very eerie, and that's exactly what we needed. 
There's some heartbeat sound design, speaking of. Oh yeah, like a bass drop here. And you can hear the riser. A lot of different organic sounds. Some high pitched noise. And at the climax, the sound gets more layered. And boom, and that's that. Pure fun, guys. Apart from that, we also did a bit of color grading, color correction, if you will. It's very important to adjust colors when working on animation. Normally, we use DaVinci Resolve to do it, but for whatever reason, we did it in Premiere this time. Each adjustment layer is either a vignette or color correction, simple as that. Color correction is a huge topic and I can talk about it for hours, but today it's about editing. If you want to learn more about color, we have free lessons on YouTube or we have a full 3D plus AI masterclass going on, but I think you already heard that one or twice in this series. Getting back to it. In general, AI tends to shift colors and even if your input shots look similar, the animated version can drift apart. As you can see in this clip, these shots uh, look noticeably different and without color correction, it would just pull us out of the story. And the best way to adjust colors is using scopes. It's used in color grading for film or commercials. You can check how bright things are, how red or blue they are, and then adjust each shot to match the others. For example, this shot clearly has more red and blue than the other one. But once we corrected it, they hold together nicely. Not perfect, but solid enough to keep us immersed. One last thing we often add in post is a little bit of a zoom or camera shake. We animate it manually in the edit. Adding that shake is a great way to create an illusion of camera movement. So yeah, that was a simple trick, but very useful at this point. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And by the way, we are actually thinking about doing a bigger masterclass, animation masterclass. So if that's something you would be interested in, let us know in the comments section. In the next video, we will set everything in motion and bring this whole series home. See you in the next one.